Hello once again and thank you for joining me on this channel. Videos are coming thick and fast at the moment. I've had quite a few inquiries about uh, NFED half-wave antennas and so forth and what you can do with them. And I have covered NFED half-waves quite a lot in this channel, but not so much recently. But I've actually been using NFED half-waves now for the last three or four years, so I know quite a bit about them. So I thought I'd just do a short video just to cover the points that um, people have been asking about. There's quite a few videos coming up. So I've got uh, a video covering coax cable because that's something that we, we all use. Uh, I've got a, quite an interesting video coming up about the G5RV, a completely different take on it. So uh, keep your eyes open for that. There's also a uh, mystery video coming up. I'm not quite sure when I should do it, um, but uh, that's a, a, a mystery video coming up and we should also be covering um, things like uh, verticals and so forth and of course the latest news and the products as they come along i'm still waiting for the x6100 to come along but as soon as i've got it i will do a video but let me just show you something which uh, i should have perhaps showed in a previous video before we get on to the nfed halfway so take a look at this when I recently featured the G90, I didn't show the detached head, and you can see here how useful it is. I've been preparing my kit for uh, portable operation when the weather gets a little better, and I've just put it into a case that I had. You can see the battery I've got, which is quite large, but it gives me about two or three days of operation at 20 watts, and this is a case I just had to hand and you can see that having the head detached makes it very easy to put into a case and of course when you're operating you can just put the head out uh, on top of the case if you want to but it's quite a convenient feature so uh, bear that in mind if you're thinking about the g90 well we just hope for better weather don't we <laughs> and when when the weather comes i should be out there one of the things i want to do is to do some work on um, verticals uh, but uh, on uh, NFED halfway verticals because I found uh, in um, over the years I mean I've been using verticals for years and years and I've always had um, there's, there's always been a bit of a question mark over verticals uh, used in small gardens so I want to get out there do some work and I plan to spend some time in Suffolk uh, where there's some open spaces and I may actually go down to the sea edge there and do some work there but that's for the, that's for the future i don't think we can talk about going down to the sea uh, in january so let's uh, let's now take a look at um infant half waves and the, the questions you've asked and hopefully i can i can cover them first of all let's have a look at the transformer you can make your own transformer i did a video very recently about making your own transformer and i'll put a link below this video so you can click on it and see for yourself you can purchase transformers. You need a 49 to 1 Anan. And there's quite a few to choose from. And provided they're made properly, they'll work. Some, I suppose, are better than others. Mine is very simple to make. And I've been using this particular model for over three years now. So I know it works. A single core should handle 100 watts. And if you're going to run higher power, then you do need to consider two or possibly three cores stacked. So if you use my, my version, um, it's, it's okay for 100 watts. Above that, you need to look at some other commercial model available. Do you need an earth or a counterpoise? Well, that topic rattles on and on. All I can say is that during the whole of my three years, I've never used a counterpoise, and I have used quite short lengths of coax um, feed in the transformer. The shortest length I've used is around about three meters. Do you need a line isolator? Yes, you do at the transmitter end. You can either use one of these ferrite cores and wind a few turns of the coax feed around it, or you can make a coil of the coax feeder. There are some details on the internet of making line isolators, or you can purchase one. But yes, you do need a line isolator to keep RF off the chassis of the transceiver. Do I need an ATU and will I get a low VSWR? Yes, you should get a low VSWR at resonance. Um, the antenna is resonant on its fundamental frequency and its harmonics. You should be able to get about 1.5, 1.6. You may find the VSWR rises on the higher harmonics. Uh, it could go up to around about 2 to 1. 
but your internal ATU will take care of that. Let's now move down to a popular configuration that people ask about, the inverted V. And here we've got a uh, antenna which will cover 40 through to 10 meters. So what length should this antenna be? Well, it needs to be resonant on 40 meters. If you have an inverted V, because it's, the ends are quite close to the ground, you will find that the frequency is lowered. So you need something slightly shorter than a normal dipole. And also, which is not often mentioned, the transformer does provide a bit of end loading because it's hung on the end of a very high impedance. So that will also tend to lower the frequency a bit. So what you need to do is to start off with the standard dipole dimensions and then trim it to resonance on the 40 meter band. And I've provided a link below this video for a quick calculator for antenna resonant lengths. I've also shown here that the case or the outer sheathing of the coax is earthed. That's not absolutely essential, but you can try it. And because the connection is right at ground level, you might as well put an earth point there. Now I get lots of questions about whether or not you can bend the end-fed half wave into a garden in order to fit it in. So let's move down and have a look. This is one example, and it's a very uh, good example actually, where you could fit it into a garden that's just 10 meters long. You've got a 10 meters top section, and you drop the ends down five meters uh, at uh, either end, which gives you a 20 meter approximately wire fitted it into a 10 meter garden. And that works extremely well. But there are many other examples of bending the end fed half wave. You know, an end fed half wave is surprisingly tolerant about being bent. So don't be frightened to try it out in your particular garden. The only thing to remember is that when you bend an antenna, it will have some effect on the resonant frequency. So you may need to adjust the length. But once you've got the length adjusted for the fundamental frequency, in this case, 40 meters, then the other band should follow. And as for the polar diagram, well, these antennas have a propensity to be omnidirectional. They won't be perfectly omnidirectional, but a low antenna in a small garden tends to have a propensity to be pretty omnidirectional. So don't uh, worry too much about uh, the, uh, the angle or the way that uh, you've fitted it into the garden. And as for the angle of radiation, well, probably in a small garden, your antenna is going to be at a level which won't give you super low angle radiation. But you should find you can work around the world quite happily. I have got a wire at the moment which is only about uh, 25 feet, what's that in metres? <laughs> 7 or 8 metres high and I regularly work into the USA uh, and uh, Canada so uh, it works. So a fairly concise video on uh, various bits and pieces um, but I do, I do like the NFED half wave and as I say I've been using them for quite a few quite a long time now so I know quite a bit about them I've tried most configurations by the way these videos uh, <laughs> are quite fun to do but you can have all sorts of problems a number of times I forgot to switch the microphone on I did a whole take the other day and I was quite pleased with it and I then thought well I'm not really sure what I said I'm not sure what I could do it again um, and then the camera battery runs out and the lights wrong and all sorts of things. And I, I always try and do a bit of music because you probably know that I'm, I'm quite into music and so forth. I've got, uh, well, I've got four keyboards here, actually. I've got two keyboards in front of me, one which is a Korg Wave State behind me. I've got my, my wife's uh, piano there, which I very rarely play myself. Not because I'm not allowed to play, but because I rather prefer to play the keyboards and... So there's one or two things to mess about with here, and there's a lot of things to get wrong. So uh, it's uh, what you see is the end product. Um, even that's not right all the time, but there we are. We're all only human, aren't we? Somebody asked me what my background in music is. Well, <laughs> it goes back a long time, as everything I've done in the past goes back a long time. Um, my, my main instrument was a violin, actually. I studied violin at Trinity College of Music. And um, I never took it up professionally, but I used to play in one or two um, orchestras and I played in the pit of the local 
theatre quite often um, for various musicals. And then, of course, I had, well, say, of course, I had a, a, quite a serious eye problem, which really present, prevented me from actually doing any live music anymore because I, I have trouble in, uh, in reading. Um, and then I took up jazz drumming about 10 or 12 years ago because I don't need to read music, and I, I quite enjoy that. That's, that's my main instrument now, jazz drumming. And the keyboard is something I sort of play around with. I did, I did study piano at Trinity College as a second instrument, but never really liked it. I never really felt, felt comfortable playing the keyboard, um, but I still mess about with it. So uh, there we are. That's, that's the potted history of music in my life. Anyway, thank you for joining me on this um, somewhat shorter video, I suppose. Um, Enjoy your home radio, take care, keep in touch by pressing the subscribe button, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.